Hello, the 31st here. How's it going? Welcome to a Pokemon biology PowerPoint. Today, I'm going to give you my thoughts on sexual selection in the world of Pokemon. Sexual selection is basically organisms deciding who they would like to breed with based on a selective process. In the real world, this involves intrasexual selection, so animals competing within the same sex for mates, and intersexual selection, so animals of the opposite sex deciding who they would like to breed with. However, Pokemon are different from animals in three key ways. Number one, they are able to breed basically from the moment they are born. Number two, they can reproduce into specifically. And number three, the offspring is always going to be the same species as the mother. As a result, intraspecies factors such as intrasexual selection are likely to be less important for Pokemon. Stuff like animals having displays to attract mates are going to be less important because the female can decide to breed with another species entirely that doesn't have that characteristic. It also means that intersexual selection is probably female dominated as they determine the species of the offspring. So if stuff like displays are out of the equation at this stage, how do females decide who they're going to mate with? Well, it seems pretty clear to me that the world of Pokemon revolves heavily around battling. Females are going to try and breed with the strongest or fittest male around. And there's an obvious way to tell who that is. Evolution. At a glance, a female can look at these two Pokemon and tell which has won the most battles as one has gained enough experience to fully evolve while the other one hasn't. And if they've won more battles, they are likely of better genetic stock and are likely a more suitable breeding partner because they will make stronger offspring. This in turn will allow the female's genes to be passed on further. This method would also limit the need for Pokemon to fight amongst themselves as only Pokemon at the same evolutionary stage would be competing. This would mean less chances for males to get injured when competing for females, and overall better chances of survival for individuals and the species. I imagine that males would also select their partners in the same way. The more evolved females would be the strongest and therefore make the strongest babies. In this way, while Pokemon can breed the minute they're born, they're unlikely to do so in the wild. Instead, they would first focus on gaining experience and leveling up. In the case of males though, they're probably more likely to try and reproduce intraspecifically. That way, their offspring are the same species as them. Sexual dimorphism is usually a result of intrasexual selection because males and females are competing amongst themselves to get mates. I'd imagine that Pokemon would generally prefer to breed within the same species just because they live in groups of that species. And like I said, males would probably prefer to have their genes passed down within the same species as them. This would explain the different behaviors and displays that we do see associated with Pokemon breeding within the same species. Additionally, I'd also hazard a guess that Pokemon with three stages of evolution are likely in a more fierce competitive environment than Pokemon within a two-stage evolutionary line. Typically, getting to the final stage of a three-stage evolution requires getting to a much higher level, and all the starters and pseudo-legendary Pokemon would fall within that bracket. Furthermore, split evolutionary lines could potentially allow mates to select for specific characteristics. For example, defense over attack. But as always, this is just theory, and I would imagine that it does vary depending on the species. Overall, sexual selection in Pokemon is likely based on strength and determined by evolutionary stage. This would make identification of the strongest potential partners much more visible for Pokemon and would mean that first stage evolutions, such as newly hatched Pokemon, probably aren't going to be selected as breeding partners straight away. Moreover, while intraspecies selection definitely plays its part, I imagine that interspecies sexual selection will play a larger role in the sexual selection of Pokemon. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this kind of biology content, I've got plenty more on the channel. You can indulge yourself and myself, both of us, in watching. There will be more biology videos coming very soon, but they will be actual videos with good animation, not just PowerPoints. So if you enjoy these things, so if you enjoy these things, I highly recommend subscribing so that you can see them when they do come out. As always, if you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Adios.